Thank you for staying with us. This is One on One on Plus TV Africa. I am Elsie Godwin. On this episode, we are one on one with an entrepreneur, philanthropist, the founder and president of Africa's Young Entrepreneurs, a non profit organization based in South Africa, which facilitates intra trade among African entrepreneurs in over 15 countries. Sumi Smart Francis. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so. Um, in your journey, I followed quite a bit, and one oh. thing you keep saying is, all you need to do to be successful as an entrepreneur and individual is to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that work in Nigeria? Just believing in yourself. <laughs> well, believing in yourself is quite deep. I, I think it goes far back, far back as the world started. Mm -hmm. I think um, you just need to know yourself and believe in your own capabilities, and I think it works everywhere. It even works spiritually, it works in the divine atmosphere. So I would shock you, I would take you as far back as creation started. Okay. Can I let you know that the only creation of God that gave him a problem was the one where he had to consult people. Every other thing he did, let there be light, executive order, what happened? It happened immediately. Mm -hmm. But when he said, let us make man in our own image, when he started consulting with angels, what happened? I'm not saying consultation is not good, but I'm saying that there's so much power when you believe in what you can do by yourself and understanding that you've got everything inside of you to make everything you want happen. So it's it's key and critical for people to understand your strength, understand what you are able to do, and then using that executive order to get things done. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, it happens everywhere, both on earth and in heaven. So aside believing in yourself, what would you say an entrepreneur needs to succeed? Of course, there's much more, mm -hmm. a lot more than believing in yourself. <clears throat> I think that's just the start, you know. Once you then believe in yourself, you know yourself, then you want to go on that journey. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you an instance now. You want to go to <clears throat> to a pretty far destination or you want to run a marathon and you're like, can I really do this? You know what I'm saying? But the fact that you believe in yourself, then you know that, yes, I can embark on this 10,000 kilometer stretch or something. But that doesn't mean you don't need to train, you don't need to keep fit and see your medicals and hit LD and stuff like that. So, of course, after believing in yourself, there's a lot more as an entrepreneur you need to do, which is acquisition of knowledge. Uh, it's very important that the world understands that we are moving far into us a very different age. And the global economic situation, there's a lot of different ages that, exist, that existed. Basically, two that we are fully aware of, which is the industrial age and also the famine age. I'm sure mm -hmm. when we were growing up, you were hearing industries, industries, mm -hmm. industries. And of course, the next thing was famine, famine, famine. But for over the past two decades, if you notice what's been happening, there's been a third age existing in the global economy. Something that new has come up. I'm sure you're aware of the age of technology. Mm -hmm. But this age is very and pretty, pretty invisible. It's an age that is driven by thoughts and knowledge. So it's safe for us to call it the creative age, the age of creativity. As an entrepreneur, you need to be very creative because you don't need to start thinking of just yam and plantain or industries as well. You can just sit down here and look around you and start creating something that makes a lot of profit for you. Creativity, I think, is very, very key in this day and age for any entrepreneur to set out on the journey. And lastly, perseverance is also key because what you think you would find on that journey is not what you find. Entrepreneurship is risk-taking. So nobody, it's like gambling. Nobody promise you what's going to be there. It's going to be a pretty good journey. So what you encounter, it's like marriage. Nobody promises you. If everybody has his own different story. You mm -hmm. cannot use anybody's syllabus for yours. You can only learn from them. So when you experience your own entrepreneurial journey, this need, key need for perseverance when the storm starts, because it will surely come. A lot of people run for startups and entrepreneurs. They run away from them, even the banking industry, even from even the public sectors because they believe that that's a very, very sensitive and risky place to invest. Mm. And I don't blame them because most of these startups die at a very young age. So it's very ideal that if this startup can persevere through those very first two, three years of their business, I can assure you that you'll be just smiling on the profit line. Okay, let me come in there. You sit right now on an organization that connects over 12.6 million people. That's right. How did you start? <sighs> AYE was... Um, was born out of business frustration. So it's basically looking around me and um, things were not working during my own entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. It was so bad that I was, and to be honest with you, I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, so I had to consult my own divine existence to say, you know what, God, if you see me through this, I will create a platform where other young entrepreneurs across Africa won't have to go through the same thing I went through. So it's basically like a calling for me. and. Um, Amazingly, yeah, God saw me through. And you know what happened? I forgot my covenant. <laughs> so I didn't even remember when you get 
things now going for you and stuff like that. But it was on the 1st of March 2010, around the very early hours in the morning, around 2, 3 a.m., that the every thought in just came back to me and said, do you remember this? Do you remember this? Do you remember saying this? And then from the logo to the name to everything, it just came to pass and the vision and the slogan. And we still just started writing everything down. And um, yeah, we started AY. And the primary focus was also to look for people who has experienced what I've gone through and who are Pan-African enough, who are continent builders, who want to make a difference for this continent to work with the organization. So we're not just looking for staff or uh, or employees or whatever you call it. We're looking for team members, Pan-African and continent builders. And that took me two years to really find and build a team. So by 2012, we started full operation. We started moving from country to countries. And because it's something that is needed in the continent, the widespread was just like a virus. It was mm. easily accepted by the entrepreneurs themselves and also by the governing bodies and the policymakers across the African continent. Okay, so from 2012 till now, it has grown to become globally recognized, not just in Africa right That's now. Right. It's easy for us to see the good parts, because I mean, you always share that there will be press releases, mm -hmm. but I would like to know the challenges. How has it been growing this organization, managing people, mm -hmm. and I mean, risking yourself in their businesses? What mm -hmm. has been the challenges so far? Hmm. You know, it gets to a point where by challenges has become so much of an advantage that you now try to look at it. And before you can find it out, it becomes so hard for you to even understand how to bring it out. I think I've used it enough to my favor. So I have to like really, really dig in to the organization's skeleton to really think of what the challenges could be. But one key thing that stands out is um, Pan-Africans. Everybody could say Africa, 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 but we are in that Pan-African to the core, to the very root. You know what I'm saying? We, we like the African vibe. Thank God for the entertainment now that is really making us accept our own. And the fashion industry, I see you flying that beautiful colors. Thank so you. So it's, it's, it's this, 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 there's so many things that is now making us embrace that which is ours. Mm -hmm. But initially, it never used to be that. It, there was, it, it wasn't really easy getting the team to make them understand, you can do this for Africa, you can do this for posterity, you can do this for legacy. A typical Nigerian wants to work for money. Mm -hmm. A typical young person is looking about well, it's typical Nigeria need money to survive. Yeah, but there's, there's actually much more that can happen. Mm -hmm. There's much more. And I won't blame them. I was also like that. My weaknesses have now become my strengths, amazingly. And that's what people should be able to do. If you can turn your weakness to your strength, you'll be the strongest person ever. How? And what do I mean? <clears throat> if you look at, like my, myself, for example, which is a typical Nigerian, the fire I could see, the farthest I could see was a year, maybe six months. So if you talk to anybody, even your friends, try to look at them and say, what do you... What's going to happen? What's, what's your 2020 plan? Okay, that's next year, they will tell you. What's your plan for 2030? Then you start seeing, they start getting lost. What's your plan for 2040? They start getting lost. They don't, they don't see that far. They don't look that far. So you'd be amazed that even people who work with you cannot see that far. They don't understand how much more. And that's why we can't get fully committed people in Africa because people just want this year, next year, and that's all. They can't even see themselves in that institution for the next 20, 20, 30 years. So that was one key challenge. But of course, educating our team several times, identifying the real people that we wanted was now, we, we now turned that challenge into a very good, strong point. And we're looking for people who could see as far as 20, 30 years. The minimum you could see in AY is 10 years. Mm. That's the minimum you can see. So when you come on board, the first question I ask you is, what do you see? And if you can start telling me what you see in the next 10 years, then I appreciate you more. Tell me what you see next week, then you're no part of us. So the challenge is that they're finding the right team is a principal one, but we've been able to work our way through it. Okay, I'm sure there are more challenges, but we'll get on to that <laughs> yeah. after this very quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is One on One on Plus TV Africa. Before we went to that very quick break, you were talking about the challenges, but let's move away from the challenges. So you listen to different pitches, business ideas. Does it do anything to your mindset, your orientation? How does it make you see things? It's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful experiences ever. Mm -hmm. It's like a producer listening to music, like musicians and listening to so many artists performing and just trying to dig in between the lines and stuff. I look out for their creativity and once I always tell people and most of my team members know creativity turns me on. Mm -hmm. So if you see things that are very creatively approaching, it just makes me happy and I just love the fact that there's hope for this continent. So yes, one of the first things is that um, 
Sometimes you get very excited and sometimes you get very disappointed. But of course not. Even the disappointment, you then begin to know what level we are in in this continent and how much more work we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not so knowledge driven. And I told you about this last age that is existing, mm -hmm. which is the age of technology backed by knowledge and creativity. And that's one thing we need to promote. You send a typical horse an email. We don't even read the entire email. We read the first three lines, we conclude. Something is posted on social media, you read the first two lines, you share. You well, just the headline, not even. You know, just the headline, and mm -hmm. you share it, and you know, so many things like that. So it's, it's, it's very critical when you see the level of thinking of some people and some reasoning. And instead of us to be disappointed, I think we should begin to understand that the, the work that needs to be done is coming closer. Mm -hmm. Instead of us to find it, it's coming right where we are, and we can then fix it. So the next time somebody blogs something rubbish or trash about you on any digital platform, do not get angry about that person. Look at that person. Oh, your own work that needs to be fixed. You fix Nigeria one person at a time. And you're like, you create that person publicly, teach the person, and you've impacted knowledge. And that's fine. Mm. So one of the major fear of um, some people I would consider having brilliant ideas in their closet is the fear of their ideas being stolen from mm. them, like intellectual property and mm. all that. Do you think that fear should be entertained? If, if I'm going to sit here and tell you right now that your idea belongs to just you or you have the only idea, then, then I'm talking trash. It's never possible. Mm. The moment you're thinking it, another person is, thousand other people are thinking the same thing you're thinking. And uh, the moment you start talking about it, at least it has started. And that, that kind of gives you a kind of sense of urgency to want to implement this idea. Because you know yourself that you've thrown this thing to the hair. Anybody can take it. I think that kind of like make it, it brings that sense of urgency. The moment you still keeping it inside of you, then then it gets deeper and the deeper and maybe wasted. You know, a lot of people die with something I call business miscarriages. The ideas even die inside before it comes out there. So I don't, I don't, I believe you can give birth to every goddamn idea that comes inside of you. It's very important. You're getting it for a reason. Mm -hmm. Bring it out. I personally, because of what I do, it's different. It's a vision, and I always say an idea can be stolen, but you can never copy a vision. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. So it depends on also what you're looking at or what you're working on. There are some things that you are doing that no one else can copy. If that's if it's a vision-driven initiative, that, and that day you will know that you called for this. It stands out. It's different. It's, it's, it impacts just everybody around you, not just you. It's not just profit. It's a social kind of thing to it. Or it's something that affects the entire universe. So you can't call that kind of movement an idea. That's a vision. That can never be copied. But for your ideas, it can, of course, easily be copied. But unfortunately, you cannot keep it inside. Mm. You have to bring it out, then it gives you the sense of urgency to execute. Okay, so I'm going to ask again. I mean, 12.6 million people is more than the population of some countries. So what's the future plan? What's the next step for AYE now? Okay, um, it's quite a lot we're doing. I think because um, I work with a, very, a bunch of creative people, uh, it's one thing that you have to stay ahead on or else you're going to become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So uh, the moment they are thinking, I'm also thinking very fast so that I can keep being relevant as president or else they're just going to, they work, my team works so fast that they're just going to kick me out and say, hey, you know what, you're not even creative just enough Just be the anymore. founder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just so I'm, I'm running as much as I can and to make things, you know, come up and listen to God and say, what do you have for us? But of course, this, you should look out for the Entrepreneurship Village coming soon. I won't tell you where it's coming from. Africa's Entrepreneurs Bank coming soon. We've been able to execute the first and largest entrepreneurs cooperative in the world, which mm -hmm. is the AYU Trust Fund. Now it's called the Entrepreneurs Trust Fund. And uh, this, this is just a lot. Of course, Africa's Entrepreneurship University, these are things that is going to be happening in the nearest future. Remember, the minimum we see is 10, 20 years. So I yeah. see 50, 60 years. So don't ask me that question. I will start telling you something about when you're 100 years. Okay, so the coming soon you mentioned that you're not sharing with us, does it have anything to do with your recent visit to the Silicon Valley um, or Facebook office? Yeah, that visit had a lot to do with um, our cooperative because mm -hmm. that's why quite impactful having a, a, a cooperative for entrepreneurs we feel very neglected remember i indicated the fact that a lot of people run to run away from investing in these guys because they believe that they are too risky mm -hmm. for for financial commitments and uh, so we came together to say you know what with this database how about we form 
the first and largest entrepreneurship cooperative backed with technology. Remember, it's a normal cooperative. It's a show, a jaw, I don't know what it's been called in different African terms. And that was the African banking way. That was the African banking system. Mm -hmm. So what we now did, creativity, is to apply creativity, back it up with technology, and trust the international world to embrace beautiful things when they say it. Mm -hmm. So that was why the invitation was sent. That, you know, what are you building here? We can't, I'm interested. And trust me to be Pan-African, to be called. You know, no, no. So we should expect a huge partnership Africa. coming soon. Mm, that partnership self is just a partnership partnership. We will not let them hijack what belongs to us. It's strictly for Africans. Okay, so visiting Silicon Valley, that's like the leading tech community in the world mm. right now. Looking at what you saw there, mm. the interactions and everything, mm. where would you say we are as a people in Nigeria and Africa? Talking about the fourth industrial revolution and tech. Firstly, I'm going to think about the bicycles as small as a bicycle. Can you ride a bicycle to work? I'm asking you a That's question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. You get into the valley and got into Google campus and there are no cars. You got to ride a bicycle from one point to another. And it's just beautiful watching that, you know, and, um, and you begin to wonder. By the time I come here with a bicycle now, you know, there's already an impression about me and, mm -hmm. and you don't understand that I'm trying to save the planet because of the emissions and stuff like that. So our thinking, our own perception of how we evaluate people based on what they have or who they know, it's really far behind. Mm. We can use the simplest thing to make the biggest efforts in implementing so many things we want to have an impact with. So Africa needs to be, to, to slow down materials and be very... The material things. Yeah, and okay. be very, use that energy to, 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 to seek and acquire knowledge because it's very powerful. Knowledge is the most important gift and the most expensive gift you can give anybody. Your teacher told you this thing, it's a cup. At what age did she tell you that? Do you remember? Primary age. Primary age. What if you pissed her off and she saw you last week and she told you this thing is a, is a wristwatch? Mm. She can't take it back, right? You already know it's a cup. That's how powerful knowledge is. Once given, it can never be taken back. So you mm. should acquire more. Okay, so the type of content we consume here in Nigeria and in mm. Africa, youth especially, does it worry you? Do you look at it and wonder where the future of Africa is? Even if you are very optimistic about where we are supposed to be or where we are mm. heading to, does it worry you, the content consumption? <sighs> Remember, we use challenge for strength. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yes, it does. What they're assimilating every time on a daily basis bothers us. But the fact that they're interested in assimilating during that platform, using that model, interests us. So, okay, since they like to dance and they like to laugh, that's all what they like. And that's the medium. So can we use that medium to pass some knowledge to them? Mm -hmm. that's, that's how we are beginning to see things. Even with our reality TV show, there's some elements of things that make people feel a little bit relaxed, not making it too serious, so that at least we can hold the target audience and then feed them the right thing they need to hear. So the fact that they are hungry for whatever information they're coming to get interests us. But what they're getting currently, uh, I must say that personally, I'm not too impressed. I feel like we can do better. Mm -hmm. It's not just government regulations or all those things. No, those things don't really work. I think it starts between you and I, you plus TV Africa. What are you throwing out there? What are you showing people from the media industries? What are you educating people about? How are you celebrating the successes of this story? And how are you telling the story of Africa? How are you portraying Africa? It's very key. And I think it's very important. You would see a media house, no media house in America will show the American soldier losing any war in any movie produced. Mm. You always find America soldier will win. FBI will capture the bad guy. This will happen. But watch the Nigerian movie. By the day you see the policeman, would it, even a four year old child would not want to be like a policeman. Mm. But if a US boy is here, an FBI, he wants to become a policeman. So we need to use entertainment to shape the perception. We, we need to do that. Okay. Keep up. If we don't do it live for real, mm -hmm. in Nollywood, when you want to show the policeman, and I'm using this to talk to every media house out there, show the policeman kind of very nice piece to well dressed, looking good. And a four year old would be like, Mom, I want to be an Nigerian police. But then that would be fiction. That would what? That would be fiction. <laughs> well, let's go. Let's when we come back, we'll definitely carry on this conversation.
Welcome back. We're still one-on-one -on -one with Sumi Smart Francis. Okay, before we went on that break, you were talking about using entertainment to um, help our perception of the things we want to change in the country. But um, I also said, wouldn't that be fiction? Because if you have a policeman dressing so nice, and then my a four-year-old sees the policeman on the street and they're not looking anything close to that, how would you explain that to them? Um, let's be aware that that particular episode or that particular movie is not going to be watched by only a four-year-old. Okay. It's also going to be watched by the relevant agencies mm -hmm. looking at it. So we can also use this to educate the old and the young. Who knows? Maybe the... To I don't use this <laughs> to tell them what they're supposed to know. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, okay, maybe our uniform is kind of like outdated. This version is good. Mm. Maybe those big heavy rifles are just too big. I like the pistol version. You know, just, you can put it out there. So it's everybody that's going to be learning this thing. But I, 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 I tell you and I remain, I stand my ground on that, that we should use entertainment to show what we want to see. And I bet you, it's, maybe, if, who, told, who told you there's no fiction everywhere? Mm. Yeah, didn't we go to America? That our American dream. Was it our American dream? Did we see those hoods and all this? I'm like, is this America? Mm. Didn't you go to the UK? Didn't you see how stunning those streets are in Europe? Didn't you see what we saw in Canada? But did they show us all those things when we were young? All we saw was that white, beautiful snow, and we just wanted to run abroad. And we got there, we saw, hey, New York could be like this. Mm. So yeah, come on, saw the fiction until it becomes real. Okay, so in 2018, you were reported to be very unhappy with um, the organizers of Big Brother Niger show. And yeah, you, you said some things that generated a lot of conversations and some were in support, right? But right now, you're talking about using entertainment to shape our narrative and our perception. Mm -hmm. Looking back now, mm -hmm. do you still feel the same way? Are you beginning to value that platform? <laughs> you're a wicked person. Have you ever been told this? <laughs> Okay, now, because there's a lot of viewers, you don't want to waste that, right? So I'll only give an advice, which is the same thing I've said. Now you've got a lot of things, a lot of viewership on that particular um, platform. We can then begin to draw a little bit and feed them. Don't, 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 come on, don't, don't give them a whole bucket of it. Mm. Spoon feed, teaspoon filled. So yes, by the next, next time, the next episode is going to come up. You know, let's bring in some, let them do some creative things. Let them do some, let them put some creative approach into the show. You know, let them put some challenge that has to do with quick thinking, positive thinking, and things like that. Sorry, I don't watch the show. So I don't know if they do that already, because now I could be criticized the more. They actually but, do. Yeah, so they should do more of that. Maybe that would get some of us also thinking and watching mm. it more. But then, uh, um, I appreciate the fact that that module has been able to attract so much audience and I appreciate the fact that we can still use it. And right now, I'm on spot, I can't really think, but I know there's a lot that can be done with that viewership. A lot can be shared with that viewership and a lot of information can be passed. How about, for an example, you know, you know uh, voting, you know, you know everybody, it's showing them the power of the vote. Then you can just throw up a graph to show this is how much votes we got, and this is a country, this is how much votes we got. It's, it's going to strike a thought process in every viewers right now. If I can vote for much of this, you can as well do this for your country. You, know? mm -hmm. you can use a graphic element to show the importance of voting education, tax education, so many things on that show. Mm -hmm. And it's, you'll be surprised how much people will be educating through that platform. Mm, but then that conversation has actually come up, mm. and it's a case of, okay, so this number, X number of people voted mm. for Big Brother candidates, right, mm. or Big Brother housemates. Mm. And when it comes to... Our elections, you see a bit of laid backness mm. um, in the past of the youth. And then they used to come out to tell you, okay, the process of voting for Big Brother is seamless. Mm. It's less stressful. It's just a funny way. And then the conversation of going electronic when it comes to politics comes in. We would go electronics in Nigeria mm. now because even though electronics is the person that is behind it. So that person will just press one button and everything will finish. So we won't go electronics. But what I'm saying, the creative approach mm -hmm. I would have put into this is to tell all the housemates and the big brother should announce how many of you all voted in the last election. Okay. Start that conversation with them. Then they start having that engagement. I didn't vote, I voted, I didn't vote, I didn't vote. Then there's some critics that come out from it, there's some education that big brother will tell them. Even expel somebody for not voting. The people are like, wow, so you can really be, find something. We can create it. I'm sure you know you're a creative person. We can create something. And people then understand that you need to get out there and vote if you want your country to be better. Mm -hmm. And do you know how much people has watched that episode? So it's, it's possible to educate them through that platform. 
Okay, so how is your relationship with Ashiwa Jubola Metero? Oh, okay. How is my relationship with him? Ashiwa is the is the patron of the organization. So mm. we have patron and patroness, and we have a couple of them from Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed to Mrs. Folon Shalakija to Dr. Sam Juna of Ghana, the owner of ShopRite, Crystal Risa. We have Tons None of them. Of okay, ask a question because yeah. of my next question, which oh, okay. is on the um, recent petitions to the EFCC by human rights activists. Mm -hmm. um, did you, did you probe Ashiwaju's, um, they call it his brilliant van now. Oh, okay. Do you think that petition was necessary? <laughs> Wait, I'm coming. <laughs> Who am I to detect what a person's right and how a person should exercise his right? Who am I? Everybody's got a right mm -hmm. to probe anybody. So, of course, the guy is exercising his fundamental human right, and he should be allowed to do that. I'm sure even my patron, our patron himself, is not going to deny that guy that, of that privilege. So, of course, he has the right to do that. He has the right to know. And, of course, he'll get his, um, his um, what's it called, the answer to that um, request at the appropriate time or through the appropriate measures that he has mm. used. All right, one last word, because our time is up. One last word for entrepreneurs out there. What would you advise them to do now, especially in this um, building economy? Creativity. Creativity is king, man. It's the ability to see far beyond. The ability to hear you when you're not talking. The ability to see you when things are dark. Creativity is magic. Mm. You can make a huge lot of money from it. Create things, man, and don't stop thinking. And most of all, to exercise your creativity, you've got to acquire a lot more knowledge. So feed yourself with positive things. YouTube is beautiful. People don't know. You know, they just think watching of videos can just be Instagram and all those Insta stories, Snapchat, things like that. When you go on YouTube, do you know you can write anything inside there and you can learn it within an hour? How to fly a plane? Think about that. Maybe you'll become a pilot as well. <laughs> all right. Thank you so <laughs> much you for your for time. Thank you for watching. We've been chatting with Sumi Smart Francis. He's the founder and president of AYE. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this conversation and all our interesting conversations on social media and on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. See you later.